Look who's in the middle of it. At some point, the Cleveland Indians are going to want to drop a game just to get the pressure release of this 22-game winning streak going. Right now, they're uh, with tied with the Royals 3-3. Last I heard, it was in the fifth inning. But, you know, the historic record is one thing. The World Series is the main prize. Maybe maybe you just lose what get lose intentionally. But we'll talk more about that. We'll have, a, uh, hopefully, some post-game reaction for you coming up in the 6 o'clock hour. Other sporting news. Sam Farmer of the LA Times tweeting out what most of us have noticed for quite some time. There's a really good chance there's going to be... Uh, so empty seats for the Bolt Stub Hub opener. Folks, I don't think it's going to be a sellout in a soccer stadium. Even a professional spin master like Mark Fabiani would have a hard time trying to make explain that. Meanwhile, we're betting there will be more than 27,000 at the stadium, formerly known as the Q, this coming Saturday. Stanford holding steady as nine-point betting favorites to beat Rocky Long's Aztecs. The two best teams I've seen on film in the last two years where the receivers do a great job of blocking or us in Stanford. The last time I looked, and I hope I'm right, they're ranked 19th in the country. So if you can play well against the 19th ranked team in the country, you ought to get a little national exposure. If we beat them as we're 3-0, and that's all it'll mean. It's the third late of the FedEx playoffs. It takes us to Lake Forest, Con Conway Farms Golf Club to be exact. Wednesday, Jason Day fired his caddy. Friday, he's firing at the pin. Is going to kick forward and go in. There's the delayed reaction. A hole in one from the Australian, Jason Day. Day's hole in one, good enough for a new BMW, a sedan that he donated right back to the Western Golf Association and the Evans Scholarship Foundation. Pretty cool there. Mark Leishman is your halfway leader going into the weekend at minus 16. He's three shots ahead of Day and Follower. That all serves as an appetizer for the 5 p.m. edition of the Prep Pickscrum Report. We call it the pre-PR. It's time to start the sports wheel. I'm joined by two-time state champion coach John Carroll, who's running, running shotgun. We have another John, John Maffey, a sports writer extraordinaire that needs no introduction in these parts. Coach, take it away, please. Hey, John, you know, you've got your finger on the pulse of prep sports uh, better than probably anybody else in the print media. Um, we got two 3-0 and teams. One of them maybe a little bit of a surprise. The other yeah. one expected. Assess the quarterbacks for us, if you would. Well, I think, John, uh, the Jack Tuttle is the real deal from Mission Hills. Tall, strong, great arm, and kind of a telepathic connection with Chris Olave, his speed receiver, which he didn't have last year. He didn't have that deep threat. And so, you know, they have that this year. And on the other side? Uh, Troy Bloomquist is an absolute surprise. Isaiah Ramos, Ramos was their quarterback. He, he left. His family moved to Utah. Troy stepped in. I talked to Coach Mack uh, a week before the season. He said, I think we're going to be okay. And they're better than okay. They're 3-0. and Quickly, who wins? Mission Hills. Mission Hills, you heard it there. John Maffey, you can almost bank on it. All right, that's it for our, our section. Now we throw it out east where Matt Gilson joins us. Take away, Matt. All right, thank you very much, Paul. We're here for the East County Game of the Week, brought to you by El Cajon Ford. East Lake making the trip up to face Grossmont. Both teams coming in at 2-1. and one. Right now we have one of the Titans with us, Micah Pietlo-Wiggs. Thanks for joining us. Now, you have been all over the field for East Lake so far. A couple rushing touchdowns, receiving touchdowns, threw a touchdown pass, a couple interceptions. What do you like doing most out there on the football field? I like, being, I like catching the ball, then getting a few yards after, getting sweet plays, and it's just nice to have the ball in my hands. <laughs> Now, your versatility extends beyond just the football field. For those who don't know, you were part of uh, the East Lake team that went to the Little League World Series. Um, how do you compare football to being on the baseball diamond? Uh, football is a lot more intense, but I like to play baseball better. I just feel like it's my better sport, and the whole Little League thing was really fun. Well, you seem to be doing okay out here on the gridiron as well. Looking forward to seeing you this spring in baseball, too. Thanks for spending some time, and good luck. We'll send it over to Allie Wagner. Thank you very much, Matt Gilson. I'm here at Olympian High School where they're getting ready to host Hilltop High. And I have the coach for the Eagles, Paul Van Nordstrom, here. Good evening. I almost said good morning. I've seen you all day long. Tell me, South Bay, you guys, when you face each other, always have a little extra umph to it. Uh, schools are real close in the South Bay. And uh, so the kids all know each other. They've played Pop Warner together. So uh, it's a good little, little uh, rivalry among a lot of the schools in the South Bay. What do you guys have to do to improve 2-3-1 on the season? Oh, we have to uh, 
uh, for sure play better on defense, and our coverage units on the special teams have to play better. And uh, offense just has to keep doing what they've been doing, and, and we should be fine. Do these fat heads freak you out a little bit? Can we get John Soderman run? Uh, yeah, you might want to put one of those up and throw some darts at it or something. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Soderman, it'd be nice to see a Soderman fat head. Yeah, I think nice. we should work on Absolutely. that because we got a glimpse of those legs during the pep rally. We'll have that a little later in the show. John Soderman, uh, actually, I'm going to go up to Rick Willis in the North County. Rick Willis, we could show your legs, too, right? You know, if they got one of Rudy or myself, they would need, like, extra paper because their their head, <laughs> those heads are so big. Anyway, hey, hey, we're at uh, El Camino High School for our Tri-City Medical Center. Uh, North County game of the week. Torrey Pines at 2-1. and one. Taking on El Camino at 2-1. Both teams have not lost to a San Diego section team, believe it or not. Should be pretty good. There's a pretty good guy on El Camino. His name is Chris Brown. And, you know, the really good news is this should be a quick game because both these teams like to run the ball a lot. And, by the way, see this shirt right here? This is the, this is the name of the El Camino student section, which is going to be right behind us. These guys are going to make their way down. It's called the Jungle. Welcome to the Jungle. Um, yeah. What? What's the name of the band? Welcome to the Jungle. Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Welcome to the Jungle. And that's where we are. We're going to be in the Jungle. I'll, I'll see you a little bit in like 6.20. Until then, let's go down to the bro who needs a fat head. All right, Rick, thanks so much. We're down here at Otai Ranch High School. Uh, they are hosting the Saints from St. Augustine. Talked to a little while ago. He said this is going to be a very, very tough game, mainly because of the fact that the Saints beat the Mustangs uh, last year. Saints come here with a record of 1-2, and two, while the Mustangs are 2-1, and one, but this should be a very, very good game. Maddie Sinclair, how's your game going to go? All right, thanks, bro. Well, I the um, Bar Vista Mariners just got here on Coronado Island, and I am now joined with for, uh, head coach Tyler Arciaga. You were featured as a player on the PPR and now as a coach, almost as if you are part of the PPR family. Do you feel as if the PPR is the, about you? No, by all means. You know, I remember Soda Bro actually during uh, during my high school days and stuff. And it, what it is, I mean, it's just it's about the kids. And what's really neat about it is to see the growth of it from you know covering four or five games to now pretty much covering. Everything every game in San Diego County. So to see the growth of it's just been fantastic. Now, what makes Mar Vista stand out from other schools is that you get to travel outside of Southern California for games. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, it's really neat. You know, even though we have about 75 or 70, 75 percent of our kids that are free or reduced lunch, we're a Title I school. The kids find it within themselves to to want to fundraise and put forth the effort to go out. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate to go play uh, in Santa Cruz in 14. Uh, we played uh, in Vegas in 15 and 17. And then a uh, neat trip we did was uh, last year to uh, Seattle, Washington. And that was just really a trip of a lifetime for these kids. Awesome. Well, good luck to you tonight. We'll have more on this game a little bit later. Paul, I'll send it back to you. All right. So uh, there's been a little difficulty. They don't have Paul yet, but can you just touch a little about, so you met up with Pete Carroll a little bit. Yeah. And it was really neat. You know, we went to the practice facility. One of our coaches played with him at UOP and set up the trip, coach Steve Sutton. And what was really neat was he got to talk to us for about 20 minutes. And I just remember one of the kids uh, asking him, Hey, why did you throw the ball on the two yard line when you had Marshawn Lynch in the Super Bowl? And you know, Pete uh, or coach Carroll was just, you know, played it cool. Just like he always is answered it with grace and uh, just really was a good example and a great story for all the kids. Awesome. Well, thank you. I think now we have Paul. Paul, I'll send it back to you. Maddie, you handled that like a pro. Job well done. Folks, it takes a Red Jacket Army to put this show on the air, make it the number one show in the land. All our, We have 32 crews out there scouring the county. And uh, we, we want you to go to KUSI.com and check out our PPR Hogcast. All these guys do sidebar stories that to give you a little something extra from the game besides highlights. When you get a chance, make sure you check out Victoria Morewood's look at the heart screening at LCAP. I don't know if we have time to show it now, but if we don't, uh, we'll show it to you at KUSI.com. Back to you guys.